Welcome to our lecture online and now we're going to look at the method called the method of elimination. Now to illustrate that I picked up a couple of other, um, I picked out a couple of other uh, linear equations that make it easier to show you the methodology. Also when they're written in this particular fashion using the method of elimination is usually a handy way to do the problem. Well you look at this and what you're trying to do is you're trying to eliminate one of the variables. You're trying to eliminate the x or the y by subtracting one equation from the other if possible but since subtracting one equation from the other will not eliminate one of the variables you need to do something first for example if I multiply the top equation by hmm, let's say 4 then this becomes minus 12x and when I add the two equations the x's would get eliminated or if I multiply the top equation by let's say 3 this becomes plus 12y and I, I multiply the bottom equation by 2 this becomes minus 12y and when I add the two equations together then then the y's drop out but I always like to do the least amount of work so I think if I multiply the top equation by 4 I only have to multiply one of the equations so I'm going to multiply the top equation by 4 and then I will then combine the two equations and the x's will drop out so the first equation now becomes minus 12x plus 16y equals 20. Notice I took each term in the equation and multiply it times 4. Now I write below that my second equation unchanged so 12x uh, minus 6y equals minus 15 and all I do now is add the two equations together. So when I do the, the x's drop out plus 16 minus 6y plus 16y minus 6y is 10y equals and 20 minus 15 is 5 and so here I can say that y is equal to 5 divided by 10 and so therefore y is equal to 1 half so that's half the solution right there I know now that the, the place where the two lines cross have a y coordinate equal to 1 half so now I need to find the y value I can do that by plugging the y back into any one of the equations maybe the one at the bottom doesn't matter which one and then I can solve that for x so when I do that I get 12x minus 6 times y which is 1 half equals minus 15 so we get 12x minus 6 times a half that's minus 3 equals minus 15 moving the 3 across I get 12x is equal to minus 15 Oop, that's not written very well here minus 15 plus 3 or 12x is equal to minus 12 now I divide both sides of the equation by the coefficient in front of x 12 and 12 so I get x equals minus 1 so when x equals minus 1 and y equals 1 half that's the place where the two lines cross so the solution is equal to let's see here that would be minus 1 and 0 0.5 now how do we know we did the problem correctly there's a way to check what if I plug those two values in the first equation the one that I didn't work with to find the value for x so I'm going to plug in y equals one half and x equals negative one into my first equation to check to see if I did the problem correctly so let me use a different color so now we're going to check the problem we're going to take the first equation and that equation is minus 3x plus 4y equals 5 so let's plug in for x a minus 1 and for y 0 0.5 and see what we get so minus 3 times minus 1 plus 4 times 1 half is that question mark equal to 5 if it is we did the problem correctly if it's not we better go back and see what we did wrong so minus 3 times a minus 1 that's a plus 3 4 times a half is plus 2 is that equal to 5 and it looks like it is so therefore I found the correct solution that's indeed the solution to our problem meaning we were tr trying to find the place where the two lines cross that's the x and y value at that particular point and that's how we use the method of elimination which again in this particular case was probably the best way to do this problem that's how we do that